Hey there. So last week we discussed uh, the elements of a tragedy, and during the making of that video, I realized that I had forgotten to cover an incredibly elemental part of storytelling. Uh, the sort of thing that without it, stories could not exist, or at least stories worth caring about. And that topic, which I'm covering today, and is in the title, so you probably recognized it, is drama. Drama lies at the heart of all storytelling. Without drama, the story is dead. There's no reason to care. It is dead out in the wa dead in the water without drama. So what is drama? How do we get drama? Well, drama in a story comes from the conflict in the story. The conflict in the story comes from characters in the story making choices, and those choices come from the character's motivation. So now we're going to talk about motivation for a bit, and this is, again, elemental to storytelling. What is motivation? Simply put, motivation is what a character wants in the context of the story. And that last part in the context of the story is important. World peace is not character motivation. That could be something that the character wants. That could be a dream of the character is, I want world peace. I want the world to be a better place. That's not motivation. Uh, motivation, good motivation is something achievable within the story. So yes, world peace could be something the character wants desperately. His motivation is, well, what can he do within the story, within the two hours of a movie, within the 400 pages of a novel, within the whatever sort of story you're telling, what does the protagonist do in order to achieve world peace? And then what he can do, his journey, what he wants at the end of that, if it's a superhero, it's beating the villain, um, that is the motivation. The motivation isn't world peace, it's I want to stop the villain in that case. So again, motivation has to be part of the story, right? Can't just be part of the character. At the same time, what the character wants, the, who the character is, informs the motivation. And likewise, motivation should inform the character. So if you have a pirate, pirate's going to want treasure. Pirate's greedy, he wants wealth, he wants money. He's not going to just, you know, get rich by doing a day job because he's a pirate. He's greedy, he, he wants it fast, so he's going to search for the treasure. And finding that treasure is his motivation. Policeman wants justice. He wants, you know, the, the world to be a better place. He wants it to be safer. So what does he do? He catches the criminal, right? That's his motivation, is catching the criminal so he can achieve his own world peace. The scientist wants to cure a disease, and I guess that's pretty straightforward. His higher goal might be he wants to understand the world. He wants to help save people. So in the context of the movie, he creates an antidote for the disease or whatever. The artist wants to create something inspiring. He wants to uh, do something that will outlive him, right? So he creates a piece of art. These end goals are the motivations, something specific to the story. Finding a cure, making a specific piece of art, catching a specific criminal, finding a specific treasure. Those are the motivations of the story. And, you know, who wants... The artist might not want, you know, doesn't want the treasure, so it doesn't make sense for him to go there. Pirate doesn't want to catch a criminal, he is a criminal. So, again, the character should inform what they want, but what they want, you know, what the, the point of the story is should also inform the character. And so I drew up a little diagram to tell you how this all fits within the context of an actual story instead of just, you know, who what something wants. And here's the diagram. And it's a little complicated, so I'll go through it. The person in blue over here, he's our protagonist right? And he wants the goal. This is a checkered goal flag, it's not a chessboard. So the protagonist wants the goal, and so he goes there, right? He goes for the goal. He makes choices at these points in green that get him closer to the goal, right? These choices, this, this journey he makes, all the choices he takes, that's the plot of the story. What the protagonist does, the choices he makes to get to the goal, are the plot of the story. There it is, right there. And you even have five, five of the choices here in this. Those are five acts. Boom. There you go. Then you have the antagonist of the story. And the antagonist wants his own goal, right, which gets in the way of the 
protagonist's goals. He wants the same goal, and of course two people can't have the same thing. I mean, if it's something metaphysical, but if the if the antagonist wants the same goal as the protagonist, it's usually limited. It's the same treasure for the pirate story. Both the protagonist and the antagonist want the same treasure. If the antagonist gets it, protagonist can't have it. Either that, or the antagonist just doesn't like the protagonist, does not want the protagonist to succeed, and so will stop the protagonist from making the right choices, or being able to make the choices that get him closer to the goal. This is the conflict. Everything the antagonist does gets in the way of our protagonist getting to the goal, that creates conflict. And plot, conflict, uh, choices, conflict, that's all drama. And all of these lines, all of these different lines are character arcs. The things that the protagonist does to get to the goal, that's his story arc. The thing that the antagonist does to get in the way of the protagonist, that's their story arc. So this is a story. Now, going back to drama, right? There's one more thing I have to talk about before we finish this video up. And that requires going back to this little chart. The comedy, or if we flip it over, the tragedy chart. And I wanted to make one thing really clear about this chart, right? And it has to do with this bit all the way here, the beginning. Never start at zero. Never. I don't, if it's a tragedy, if it's a comedy, whatever story you're telling, never start at zero happiness. Because at zero happiness, your character has no motivation. Your protagonist is either dead or hopeless. You need a little bit of happiness. You need a little spark. Even if they start at point zero zero one, you need a little something to get to the story. To get the story started, to, ha to ha for the character to have motivation in order to go on the journey that is the plot of the story, you cannot start them with zero happiness. And to make this possibly even more complicated in my in my struggle to make to keep this simple, stupid, I've come up with a mathematical formula for drama. Now, keep in mind, I am not a math person, but I came up with this to make it as simply complicated as possible, I guess. The sum total of drama in the story is equal to your character's state in the beginning, your protagonist's state in the beginning of the story, times the absolute value of the happiness of the climax, or the sadness of the climax, minus happiness in the ending. So let's say you have this story, right? You have a comedy. He begins at four, right? Four happiness. So we'll keep that aside. We'll plug it in to this, right? Happiness at the climax is, let's say, one. He's at one. Again, you don't want to really hit zero because they got you can hit zero at the climax, but not not recommended. And you, they could kill the character. It happens, and then you have the resurrection. But so let's say that it's one over here, and then at the ending, happiness is ten. So four, one, ten. You plug that into here. So you have 1 minus 10 is 9, but it's, well, it's negative 9, so absolute value of that is 9 times 4. You have, what is that, 36? 36 drama on a scale of whatever. I mean, it's not inherently numerical, but you have 36, right? If you have a story that's a straight line, you have 5 minus 5, 0 times 5 is 0, no drama. If you have a story where you begin at zero, doesn't matter what you get here, multiply it by zero, it's zero, zero drama. So your climax could be zero, your ending could be zero, if it's a tragedy, but you, this can never be zero, or you just don't have a story. And again, the climax and the ending can't be the same either, because then you have a zero and it multiplies and you get a zero. So you need, even if it's one, two, and one, that's better than having any of these at zero. Um, still not a great story, but, you know, that, that's, that's what you can do. But don't start at zero. Unless, of course, like with all of these videos, with all of these rules and guidelines I'm making up, you can break all of them if you're a good enough storyteller. Um, none of these, as dogmatic as I might be sounding right now, 
rules are meant to be broken, especially narrative rules, because they're built over millions and well, not millions, because we haven't been around that long, but thousands of years. And smart, genius, creative people have found ways to bend them and twist them and break them in their own ways, and that's a lot of what uh, postmodernism is, or metamodernism is breaking rules, or any sort of big movement in art is about breaking a rule. So, and you can try starting at zero if you can find a way to make it work, by all means, but yeah, and like all of these videos are just general kind of things that uh, I think are important in terms of storytelling as someone who is read and watched and heard a lot of stories um and then like has has a degree in 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 doing story analysis um so i hope that you found this video uh somewhat informative uh somewhat entertaining um hopefully i explained uh what can be a complicated subject um with drama and character motivation hopefully ironed a few things out for anyone out there. Um, and I think the next video, we're gonna be doing something a little different. I think next video, I will actually take what we've learned up to this point to analyze, uh, to analyze an actual story. I'm gonna analyze a movie um, because I had really liked this movie and I think it's a good example to analyze for things. So yeah, next uh, week, I suppose, um, stay and Hopefully watch me analyze a video and explain everything we've covered in some actual context. So, yeah. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you'll join me next week for...